listen, unbelievably excited, thankful, uh, beyond grateful to have this opportunity to come back uh, to the University of South Carolina, a place that I love and have a lot of passion for. Um, I believe you are who you are because somebody loved you. So I'd be remiss not to thank a few people first, uh, and then I'll open it up for questions. But uh, I want to thank my mom and dad, Bill and Penny Kimry. My dad, of course, is a longtime high school football coach here in South Carolina, was a head coach for 34 years and coached uh, many years past that, including the last few with me, which was really special. Uh, but I got my love and passion for the game of football from my dad. Uh, my mom, um, Penny, who was an engineering major at the University of South Carolina, finished near the top of her class. I always joke with my dad, I'm glad I got mom's brain and not yours. Uh, but she's a, a wonderful mother, and they have loved me well, and I'm very grateful to them. I want to thank Hammond School. You know, when you're 24 years old, you think you know everything. And I think every year since I started coaching, you realize how little you do know. Uh, but Hammond School took a chance on a young coach that had just been a graduate assistant at South Carolina and, uh, and let me grow into the person that I am today. Uh, let me do some things like uh, teach a philosophy class for over a decade. What kind of football coach gets an opportunity to do that? To travel abroad uh, close to 10 times. And I think uh, I've been able to spend a lot of time just being able to reflect and learn and learn from great people here at Hammond School. Uh, Chris Angel, Jeff Barnes, Stephen Hillard, and so many other people. So I'm thankful for that time and looking forward to continuing to be a part of that community as our children still go to school there. Uh, I'm thankful to Brad Scott for um, convincing me to come to South Carolina and walk on in 1998. Uh, for Coach Lou Holtz and Skip Holtz, who coached me for the majority of my career there uh, and hired me as a graduate assistant as soon as I was done. I was able to trade some texts with both Coach Holtz and Skip the last couple of days, and it's really special. Um, Skip Holtz had a tremendous impact on me, more so than probably any other coach other than my father. And so, uh, I really appreciate him and the impact he's had on my life. I want to thank former players and my teammates. I feel humbled. I feel empowered by them uh, that I represent uh, a lot of them as a former player. I know that they take pride in this university and those things matter. And I want them to know that uh, I'm going to bear that spirit well. And I'm, I'm grateful for them. I look forward to more and more interactions with former players and teammates of mine and getting them in more and more involved to our program. Uh, the high school coaches in the state of South Carolina, um, I've been one for 17 years. I know what it's like to be a high school coach, what it means to uh, pump up the balls and carry the ball back to practice or make sure the uh, headsets are charged or what have you. Um, I just want you to know uh, South Carolina is a place that you guys will always be welcome. Whatever I can do personally to help you, uh, I'm here. And, um, and I'm really appreciative of the great coaches that we have in the state of South Carolina. Uh, I want to thank our fans. You know, I remember – Starting at South Carolina under Coach Scott, we won our first game, and then we lost 21 in a row. And those fans were in the stands the entire time, whether it was the 10-game losing streak to end that season or the 0-11 uh, season. You know, as I was thinking through what to say, an image came to my mind, which was running out of 2001 for the first time. And the first thing I saw was a guy at the very top of the stadium in the Upper East stands just going crazy. And I was like, man, that guy needs to calm down or he's going to fall out of the stadium and uh, that's the kind of passionate fans that we have. And, uh, and I appreciate them and we need them. And uh, I wanna make sure our players understand that. I know that they do. Um, and so I'm looking forward to that, that stadium getting filled again and a lot of uh, people going crazy for Sandstorm in 2001 and just a lot of the cheers in that stadium. I remember watching Todd Ellis play football as a young kid. I was in the stadium in 92 when Hank Campbell stuffed Tennessee for the two point conversion watching Steve Taney, he'll play. So many memories that I have of williams Bryce Stadium, they, they mean so much to me. And so the fans mean a lot to me too. And I wanna see that passion erupted in that stadium again. And I'm gonna do everything on my perspective to try, try to help and make that happen. Uh, and lastly, I wanna thank Shane Beamer. Um, Shane and I, I knew him some when he was here under Coach Spurrier, but we really started a friendship uh, while he started recruiting Hammond at Georgia and at Oklahoma. And I see in him what I think all you guys see, which is a man that's got a lot of integrity and authenticity. He's got passion. He's positive. Uh, he means what he says. And, and I've seen a lot of guys come through recruiting, and I've never seen a guy that carries himself the way that Shane Beamer does. And uh, I've never heard a single person ever say a negative word about him. And that's hard to do in that profession. Um, so I'm unbelievably grateful for the opportunity that, that Shane's given me. And I'm really looking forward to, to getting started. And I, with that, I'll open it up to any questions. David, with the first one. 
How's it going, uh, Eric? Good to see you again. Uh, two questions. Um, one, uh, you know, how long have you wanted this to be on staff at USC? And two, I guess this means the end of the podcast. <laughs> like I knew that was coming. Oh, uh, man, I don't know. You know, I was a graduate assistant, David, and I felt like the opportunity at Hammond was unbelievable. And I think I needed to find myself a little bit. I, I worried about getting into that profession without kind of knowing who I was. Um, I would say it's probably been about 10 years where I would have done it had it been the right time and for the right person. And, uh, and there's a, a variety of reasons how these things work out. And, and for nobody's fault, they just didn't work out. Uh, but to be here, I'm, I'm grateful. Uh, and for the podcast, you have to ask Steve. I have, I have no idea. Um, but, you know, yeah, we'll see what happens there. If somebody wants to run with it, I'm fine with it. Um, but it was a lot of fun to do it. And, and actually, to me, a lot of you guys, to meet former players, um, you know, guys from every generation. It was just a unique opportunity to really get a, a grounded education in Gamecock football and hopefully to, to pull a lot of guys together. And, uh, and so, you know, I'm, I'm grateful for that time and for the people that came, including yourself. Mike Gillespie. Hey, Eric, thanks for doing this this morning. Um, you know, kind of a similar question to David's, but you were so close for, for kind of the last 10 years to accepting a, a position on staff. So I'm just wondering, you know, when you finally got that official phone call, hey, you're in, what were some of the emotions like that day? What was that phone call like for you? Oh, it was really emotional and for my whole family because uh, it has been a dream for a while and, and, it, and it worked out. But, uh, you know, we've we certainly had our celebratory meetings. We had some friends over to celebrate. And uh, but now I'm ready to get to work. So I think to me, that's the biggest thing is that I can get in there, start calling recruits and start, you know, showing them why they need to come to South Carolina. But it was a it was a special moment for me that I'll always remember. Rick Henry. Well, first of all, Eric, congratulations and happy holidays to you and your family. Um, Coach Beamer said one thing he loved about getting you on staff is that you're very passionate about uh, being a Gamecock, about coming back to work for your alma mater. Uh, what will you tell recruits about what can they expect when they sign on to play football for the University of South Carolina? Yeah, I think that the first thing is that we have a unbelievable opportunity to be immersed in a, in a giant family. Uh, one which starts with, in my mind, the city of Columbia. There's so many great opportunities for young men. And I've seen it time and time again. When they get that degree, I know everybody wants to play in the NFL, but the, you know, the majority of them don't. Um, but there's a great opportunity to be in the city of Columbia and to prosper as a graduate from the University of South Carolina. I think of my friend Ryan Brewer who has a very successful business. I think of other guys that have jumped into other uh, owning businesses or are getting into the law or what have you. Um, the city of Columbia is a unique place in the SEC, I believe, for young people to come about. I, I think we have a top-notch university that's going to get them prepared for life. And, uh, and it's, it's gonna be an awesome experience. I mean, you've seen, Rick, how much it's changed over the years since I've been there. I mean, the facilities are unbelievable. Where they're living is unbelievable. And the opportunities they have to engage in culture uh, are just are just you can't find those in other cities um, and then I think that the atmosphere that Shane Beamer is going to build is going to be centered around the love of each other the love of the game and, and family and uh, and I think it's going to be a very healthy place for a young man to come in and uh, and really um, not just be um, not just progress toward playing in the NFL but progress as a human being and a citizen and I think all those things are important. Mike Cuba. Eric, to piggyback off the question that DC asked you, you know, for a guy that has more rings than Bill Russell in terms of winning state championships at, at Hammond and then a guy that get, also got paid uh, for a podcast or to have some beers and ask football questions, why now? Why now? And, and would it only have been USC or would this, you know, if an opportunity had come up at a different school, would you have explored that? Um, no, I wouldn't have, Mike. You know, my wife and I, we love Hammond School. And again, we're going to stay a part of this community. Um, but, you know, we've never thought we would just run around the country chasing the college dream. We always just said, if a space comes up at South Carolina and, and we have that opportunity, we'll kind of give God the space to work that out. And, um, and that's what happened. And so for us, you know, it's always something I've, I've wanted to do because I love the university a lot, but also feel like I can give a lot to the university. Um, and so I'm grateful for the opportunity. Eric Boynton. Yeah, hi, Eric. Uh, Happy New Year. 
what what would you can you kind of put your finger on one thing that's maybe kind of kept South Carolina from being a consistently successful program? And what do you maybe see as kind of the main thing, whether on the field, off the field, maybe one or two points that need to be changed to, to get this thing going in the right direction on a, on a regular basis? Well, I think we've been close. Of course, you have challenges when you're, you know, the, the geographic challenges that we have in terms of recruiting. I think consistency is important. If you look at the most uh, successful time in Carolina's history, it was after Coach Spurrier had been here six, seven, eight years. Um, and so having consistency at the top is important. Uh, but listen, I think in, in a state like South Carolina, um, it's all hands on deck. And I think we need everybody. We need, we need, uh, a consistent staff. We need great leadership at the top, which we have with Shane Beamer. Um, we need the university. We need the community. We need the fans, and we all got to pull together. And I think if we can um, have that message out there, and everybody joins in together, we can put something, um, a program together that's going to be special for a long time. But we have to differentiate ourselves. Josh Kendall. Hey, Eric. Hey, Josh. From a uh, you may have heard when I Shane talked about this, um, but bringing head coaches on guys who have head coaching experience. What can you bring from that perspective? You think that will be helpful to Shane? And sort of the flip side of that question, coming from outside the collegiate environment, what sort of perspective do you think you might be able to bring that'll help? Well, I think first of all, my posture is going to be to come in and learn a lot. I'm going to have to acclimate to you know this level of play. Uh, although I feel very comfortable, I can do that quickly. Um, you know, I, I've been a head coach a long time, but other guys on the staff have been in college, which I have not. I think one thing that's unique is I've been at one place for a long time and been able to sustain success for a long period of time. And I kind of know what it feels like to, to um, continually meet that challenge year in and year out and what some of those challenges may be. Um, but, you know, more than anything, Josh, what I want to do is, is come in and, and see where I can help and where I can learn and, and really recruit hard and, um, and go from there. Ben Reiner. Uh, hey, Eric, uh, kind of a couple questions. First, sort of piggybacking off that, what do you feel like are kind of the areas where you're gonna have sort of the, the most transition and, what, and sort of the most to learn and maybe the areas where you feel like you kind of come in having a better feel for kind of this college level and also, uh, are you going to miss it all being able to, to live tweet analysis of, uh, of the games uh, dur during them? No, I'm not going to miss that at all, um, Ben. But I think just the rhythm of getting into the whole schedule. Uh, started recruiting some yesterday and really, really just enjoy it. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm excited about that whole aspect of this job is recruiting. Uh, regardless of what people say, we didn't do that at Hammond. Um, but, but to get to show young, young people, um, you know, why I feel like this is such a special place to come and play and to grow up because I've literally lived here my whole life. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm really looking forward to learning how to do that even more, but also just getting it done. Uh, of course, you know, listen, the SEC is, is different from a schematic level than high school football. The challenges you have when you have a roster with 45 guys on it is very different than the challenge you have with a roster with 105 guys on it. Um, and the schemes are gonna be a little bit more complex, but at the end of the day, football's football. And I think I can make that transition um, you know, relatively easily. I think in terms of strengths, you know, I've been studying some things that are kind of outside the box for a long time now. I've taught a philosophy class for over a decade. I love to try to uh, figure out different ways, shapes, and forms to incorporate outside thinking into the game of football. And so where I can do that in a, in a humble way, I'm going to try to do that. Jen Del Bianco. Hey, Eric, what are you most excited about working with Mike Bobo? And how has your relationship obviously grown having coached his son this, this past year? Uh, I'm super excited. I think Mike Bobo is one of the premier play callers uh, in the SEC and in our country. I thought he did an amazing job last year. I was very, very um, adamant about that with some of the challenges that we had. I thought he did a, a great job. And, and, and his run game and play action game is just is something that I'm looking forward to learning more and more about. And, uh, and, you know, there's a reason that he's been so successful for so long. Um, and I'm, I'm, again, looking forward to getting in that room and, and learning more and more from him and how he, you know, formulates his play sheet and calls what he calls and what he sees and how he describes things. I'm sure there'll be a, a learning curve in terms of the language. Anytime you come into a new staff, there is that. But uh, we've had great interactions. I coached his son, Drew, last year, who's a fantastic player in his own right. 
And every time I've talked to Coach Bobo, he's just been nothing but but kind and and uh, an easy guy to talk to. So I'm I'm really looking forward to learning a lot from him. John Whittle. Yeah, thanks, Eric. Uh, you you mentioned teaching the philosophy class. Um, how, how does that kind of overlap with football? What are some things that uh, you bring from a philosophical standpoint that that you want to bring uh, to your players or, or or the team just just from that standpoint? Well, John, I think you know any culture has to have values and understanding those values on a little bit of a deeper level, being able to ground those things, um, and you know, and the history of thought. We talk about the history of Western thought in my class a lot. And, and what it does is you, I think it helps you understand maybe the current of thinking that your players are in, and it gives you a better opportunity to relate to those players. When you understand, oh, I, I think that they're being influenced by this school of thinking or this school of thinking, uh, and you can diagnose those things in a culture, um, then you can, I say, better minister to the kind of soul of the team. And so uh, I've been studying that a lot. I look forward to, to trying to implement some of that stuff, you know, where I can. Phil Kornblut. Okay. All right. Oh, okay. Uh, hey, Eric, and uh, congratulations. Uh, two questions for you. Have you had a chance to talk to Nick Muse um, about his plans and, and maybe what is your pitch to him? Um, and, and secondly, having been a highly successful uh, high school coach, uh, receiving all the accolades and the plaudits that come with that, are you prepared as a college coach in Columbia to deal with the scrutiny, the criticism that inevitably, inevitably comes when things maybe don't go well and like every part of your life being dissected by people on social media? Yeah, yeah thanks, Phil. Um, I'm, so you're saying, can I get ready for you and all the tough questions from you? <laughs> no, yeah, uh, listen, I, I get what it is. I understand um, how that works and, and that your life becomes a little bit more public and, and I understand some of the criticism and, and I, and I'm okay with that. Uh, and listen, I get the frustration when you're, when you're not winning and things are going wrong because we all want to win and we all want to do it together. And when it doesn't happen, you know, people are critical and, and that's okay. It's part of the job. Uh, yeah. I talked to Nick Muse last night, had a great conversation with him. Um, and, you know, I feel confident that he's going to be back next year. He's still working through a couple things in terms of talking to some people, but we had a wonderful conversation. He seems like a great guy, and I look forward to him, you know, coming back and being a great leader on this team. Uh, we need him. Reggie Anderson. Hey, Eric. Uh, this process, how did it start? Did you reach out to him? Did you guys kind of a third party, you know, talk to, to Coach Beamer on your behalf? Just the origin of this of this process of you getting hired. <laughs> There's no third parties involved here. Um, you know, we, we've known each other for a couple of years, really, in terms of a friendship. And I knew a couple of years ago, and he told me, hey, you know, that's my dream job. And if that job ever comes open, um, you know, I really, I really would like to have it. And, and having got to know him in my head, I was like, man, if this job does come open, you would be perfect for it. Uh, and so, you know, he, he knew how much I love Carolina. I knew how much he loved Carolina. Um, and, you know, I, my fingers were crossed during the process. And we had some conversations about that potential. Dick Cox. Now that you are a college recruiter, what things did you learn from all the college coaches that came in and recruited your players? I think for me, you could really see the authenticity in some of them that they really either enjoyed what they were doing, they enjoyed people, or they enjoyed the geography in which they were doing it. Uh, and for me, I, I feel like all three of those things are true. Uh, and sometimes where there was a disconnect, you could tell with some guys. And I think that that's why hopefully, um, you know, young men, when I talk to them about the university, they're going to see that it's coming from a genuine and true place. Ben Reiner. Uh, hey, Eric, uh, kind of two questions. The first one is, obviously, you haven't coached on the college level in a while, but are there lessons from your time as a GA way back when that sort of might be valuable now? And sort of the second question is, how valuable is it that You've been around Gamecocks football. You've been going to the practices for, you know, multiple decades. I mean, you, you might have been to more, more Gamecocks practices than some of the coaches currently on staff. <laughs> I don't know about that. It is helpful, Ben. I coached tight ends when I was there. I uh, had to run that room and grade them. Also had to run the scout team and break down all the film. We didn't have all these analysts and GAs that we have now. So I was there for 
120 hours a week and, and doing it all by myself. Um, so I managed that room before. It was a little bit trickier then because I just played with these guys. And we were friends and, and I'm just a year older. Uh, and so I think this will be a little bit easier for me just because I, I'm, I'm older. Um, but I'm looking forward to being in a room and talk to all those guys yesterday. Seem like wonderful young men and talk to them about, you know, really becoming a family. I want them to see my kids. My son's already knows their names and is excited about them. I want them over to my house and to, and to live life with us and, and, and see that translated into a comfort level on the football field. So, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. And I think that that time as a GA helped me.